Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This is an English version of a presentation originally given in Hebrew in an Israeli conference on uh, distance learning. In this presentation, I'm describing a method that was developed at Ben Gurion University by me uh, for enhancing uh, courses in engineering and in particular in the area of um, electronics engineering that I'm teaching. It's worthwhile to think a little bit about what are the features and the targets in engineering education and especially in um, higher education. I think there is a difference between engineering higher education and other areas of education in that not only do we have uh, to convey to the students knowledge, know-how, new ideas, etc., mathematical um, skills, but we do have to develop intuition and creativ creativity, which are extremely important to the professional engineer. For this purpose, class lecturing is excellent because once this, the lecturer starts to write from the seed idea, a subject, developing it slowly, step by step, the student can actually uh, follow the way the lecturer is thinking and the way he reaches a conclusion and all the aspects uh, of the uh, subject matter on hand. This is uh, in contrast to the method in which uh, a slide is prepared with all the information on it and it's thrown in. The students are sort of overwhelmed with all the information and it's kind of difficult to um, guide them through the development of the ideas. Consider, for example, this drawing, which is a, an electronic circuit. It's a switched capacitor converter, as a matter of fact. Suppose uh, this is a subject matter that is now being um, taught, and the lecturer has to explain the mathematics behind it, how it operates, what can you do with it, etc. Now, on the blackboard, it's really very easy because all you have to do is really um, start drawing, say, here's the way the current is flowing, the polarity of the voltage, and then since there is a switch here, there are different position, this is another position, and this is here, this position, and then you can go on explaining uh, the relationship between the input node to the output node, very easy, very handy on a blackboard. Now suppose you'd like to bring all this to the internet, enabling the student to watch this lecture, to learn through their own PC at home. Now one way would be to actually uh, video photograph the lecture. This is done, but the quality that we get is really very poor. Not only that, camera has to run through the lecturer going from one side to the other side of the blackboard. It's really confusing and our experience has been that this is really not a good solution to, to this problem. Another way would be to prepare an animated presentation. This is excellent. However, for that you need to prepare uh, a long process through a long process that usually a person would need actually help a team of people walking out with all the details and uh, there's not only the question of time, there's a lot of money, equipment, etc. And also uh, the, the problem is that uh, with the animated um, presentation, if it's really complex, it's very difficult to lecture this way because you have to remember uh, at which stage, what is sort of popping up, and uh, again, uh, this can be done, and it is being done, but um, it, I don't think that this is the solution uh, for the ordinary lecturer that really doesn't want uh, to waste his time, I'd say waste because it's a, long, a lot of time, preparing lectures, and uh, especially in areas that are changing and and changes have to be made from year to year. So 
I was looking for a way that will simplify matters, that a lecturer can do it himself with little or no help, and that will be sort of streamlined without any big preparations. So my objective was to, on one hand, to get as close as possible to the classroom environment, in which there's a chemistry there between the student and the lecturer. Um, things are developing on the blackboard. Students can see how they develop. And, of course, keeping the quality of the images nice so that uh, uh, students watching it from home uh, will be able to follow uh, what is going on uh, and uh, not like, as I said, a, uh, uh, a video photographed uh, lectures. Another objective is, of course, to make it simple that there be no need for um, special equipment or uh, preparation and, of course, for playback. Uh, you'd like the student to be able to watch the lectures um, from home, from a regular PC, without any special uh, gizmo or even a special uh, software, except for the ones that he already has on, on his computer. Let me start from the end. Let me see to where did we, let me show you to where did we get by looking at a lecture that has been prepared and what we're going to see now is the way that a student or any other person can watch this lecture from uh, home or from any PC anywhere in the world as a matter of fact because it's posted on the internet and then we we'll sort of uh, go into the question how do we prepare it and the steps that I would recommend uh, to uh, get started. So, um, <clears throat> this is a lecture in electronics circuits. Uh, it is in Hebrew, so uh, for those who understand Hebrew, it should be okay. Uh, for those who do not, then just you know, watching and seeing the way it looks and prepare. <laughs> לא משנה את ג'י חלקי בטא, וזה אומר שבאזור, אני חוזר עוד הפעם, באזור שבטא A אופן לופ גדול מ-1, ההגבר לא ישתנה. זאת אומרת שאם יש לי מגבר, כפי שנתון פה, אני יכול לשים פה קבל, הקבל הזה יגרום לבטא, שהיא כפי שנראה פה, אחד חלקי בטא, כפי שמתואר באחד חלקי, ואם אני אכוונן נכון את המקום של הקוטב, אני אקלע פה, וזאת מערכת יציבה. ואז זה אומר שגם G באזור הזה, הוא יורד ב-20 דבילי דקאדה, ולכן זה קו. Okay, as you can see, we have slides which are sort of pre-prepared. They have some information on it, but not all of it. Sort of the basic information that actually takes a long time to draw uh, is already put in. And as the lecture develops, uh, the lecturer adds on handwritten information as he would do it on the blackboard. Now the difference is that um, we are not photographing, I mean the difference between this and the uh, video photograph uh, lecture is that this is not photographed, as you can see the quality is very good, and of course we do have an index here that you can sort of uh, go back and forth and this is, of course, very important. If a student is missing some information, he can go back and look at it. So the idea is uh, to prepare uh, the lectures 
in either PowerPoint or writing them throughout on what I called electronic blackboard. In the case of the pre-prepared PowerPoint slides, information is already there and additional information is written uh, by hand. The means to accomplish this are a tablet PC, this is like the one that I'm using now in which you can write and draw. We need a video capturing software and we have been using Camtasia. by TechSmith. And an important feature would be that this capturing of the um, lectures is done in class. The advantage of this is actually uh, twofold. Number one is that um, there is sort of the chemistry of the class and this atmosphere of a classroom. And also, uh, there is a place, of course, for student questions, uh, which then are implemented uh, into the lecture itself. On the other hand, the electronic board is a method by which no preparation is made. There are no PowerPoint slides, but rather a template that the lecturer is writing on exactly as he would do uh, on the blackboard. I'll show you an example later on. And all this is recorded, um, video and um, uh, audio, and then put on the internet as a video file. Now the <coughs> way this is done is for the PowerPoint method, PowerPoint prepared slide method, there is a first phase or an initial phase in which that the lectures are actually recorded. They are recorded in class and here are some pictures of me sitting in the class and uh, as you can see uh, here is the uh, tablet PC. Um, it's tilted a little bit as it stands on a um, sort of placed on the stand that we have prepared so it's easier to write on. It is connected to a uh, projector so that the information is projected uh, on the screen and while explaining the slide, writing on it, the student uh, can watch it. This is how the way the students are seeing it, seeing the lecturer and then the projected slides and the writing which is developing uh, on the slide itself. Once this is done, all the information is collected. This is the way it ends up, like an original slide, which is this nice drawings, plus the handwritten part, plus the audio. All this is then uh, recorded by the uh, capturing software which is sort of sitting in the be background on the uh, tablet PC. There's nothing to uh, handle during uh, the lecture. It is automatically recording everything. And then with a very simple uh, procedure, uh, you, it is possible to tr translate these recordings into a uh, uh, internet compatible format that you can then just post on the internet on a website and it will be accessible to uh, people who have the permission to get into this particular website or open to all. The other way would be uh, using an electronic board and in this case as I've said this would be suitable for courses with uh, number one that the lecturer does not want or cannot or doesn't have the time to prepare the PowerPoint slides or with the uh, content that is changing from year to year, like a graduate um, courses, and that uh, 
there's really a, a waste of time and, 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 and maybe excessive to prepare slides. So um, in this case, one can use this second approach of the uh, electronic board, which I'm going to show you how it ends up. In this case, as I've said, uh, we have just a um, template or כשהטרניסטור העליון מוליך, נקבל מתח שהוא, המתח הוא כאן, זה VCC חלקי 2, נקבל מתח שהוא VCC חלקי 2, ואחר כך נקבל כאן, כשזה מוליך, נקבל, ה-VCC חלקי 2 העליון נובע מ-VCC פחות VCC חלקי 2, והתחתון הוא בעצם, אנחנו רואים את המתח של הקבל VCC חלקי 2, וזה בעצם המתח על השנאי. השנאי הזה אה, משקף לנו את המתחים כאן ביציאה, ולכן בכל מקום כאן מופיע, סליחה, אה, פה ופה זה כמובן בפאזה הפוכה, ואז הדיודה הזאת מיישרת את החלק הזה, הדיודה הזאת מיישרת את החלק הזה, וכאן אנחנו מקבלים את הדבר הזה. זה חצי גשר PWM קלאסי. Again, what we see here is uh, exactly what normally would be written on a blackboard or whiteboard, except the fact that it is recorded, it is written on a, a tablet PC, being recorded and then Uh, posted on the internet. Obviously, uh, whatever you do on the blackboard, you can do here, you can write. Uh, in fact, there are uh, different colors that you use. Um, there are, uh, you can erase. And of course, the nice thing about having it uh, on the tablet PC that you go, can go back to it. That is, in the case of a uh, blackboard, once you erase it, that's it. Uh, here, you can go from one page to another And then if you'd like to show something that has been done earlier, you just go back. And Now obviously, uh, to be more effective, uh, these lectures are uh, put on a website. Uh, in our case, we have uh, for each course a, its own page. And let me just show you um, the way it's organized in, in this respect uh, in the website. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to enter uh, Our website. I'm doing it again uh, from the uh, <coughs> uh, tablet PC and this is something that can be done in class. That is, this is a, another very important option uh, and possibility of the method that I'm showing in that you can go into other um, programs, you can go into the internet, you can show simulation on a uh, uh, simulation program Everything you do, everything you show, everything is, that is projected is being recorded and then uh, put as is uh, on the internet with, as I've said, very, very little effort from the uh, point of view of the lecturer. So this is the, the website for the analog circuit course that uh, I'm teaching. Uh, it has, of course, many other information on it. Let me just go into the lecturer's uh, Part. And uh, what I'm showing here is a table in which we have uh, the lectures organized. Uh, and then we have the slides put on PDF in various formats, two slides or three slides per page. Let me just go, say, to this one, for example. So this is These are the bare um, slides on which, of course, during the lecture, things are being added. Uh, this is a format of uh, three slides uh, per page. There are some, there is a room here for uh, writing. So uh, when watching the lecture, uh, either in class or through the uh, internet, uh, students are supposed to have uh, these sheets um, before them, and like a notebook, they can write here their notes, uh, add information on it, etc. 
and this will be very useful, of course, later on uh, for uh, uh, kind of going back and uh, rehearsing. Uh, but in this case, of course, everything is still on the internet, and throughout the course term, a student can go back and forth to any uh, lecture that he wants to uh, to watch. And this has been uh, a very important uh, feature that the students like very much. So, and of course, uh, aside from the slides, uh, we do have the uh, video lectures, and here are the lectures. So let me just open it, and this is exactly how a student would uh, open a lecture uh, from home. This is the way it would look. Okay, this is um, again, and we have seen an example like this. Let me just stop it. And uh, in this case, um, it's the midst of a lecture. Uh, here, are the handwritten part, uh, the original part, etc. And uh, this is exactly how a student uh, can see it uh, uh, from home or from anywhere, uh, even while traveling. So, um, as I've mentioned, uh, we have used the two methods, both the uh, pre-prepared uh, PowerPoint slide method and the electronic board. I'm using the electronic board for um, graduate courses in which uh, I mean, actually, it's a seminar course, which is sort of changing from time to time. And, I mean, the content is changing. So, um, this is very handy. And the student can um, watch uh, the lectures, uh, you know, from, from home. Now, we have been using these, this method for about four years. Um, students like it very much. I haven't seen a change in the grades, that is the level of knowledge, to the best of my understanding, is about the same. However, uh, students are happy in that they feel more comfortable having access to the internet you know, lectures, but the, what is more important is that uh, if this course is given both as a frontal lecture in class, only 10% will show up. I'm not making it mandatory, so it's up to the student to decide whether he wants to show up uh, to the lecture or not. And uh, only 10%, so if I have a class of, say, 200 students, uh, typically, uh, only 20 will show up, sometimes even less. Sometimes, in fact, I'm sort of giving them a uh, cut off point that uh, I'm not going to lecture be below five. Now, some cases, in, when the classes are small, or say the summer semester or so, uh, the, the course is given without any frontal uh, lectures at all, and all the students are sitting at home or university, wherever they have access to a PC, and studying the material. Now. When the lecture is given also in the classroom, I mean, the, the course is also given in a, the frontal old way, I'm lecturing it the same way on the tablet PC, except that at this time I'm not using it uh, to post it on the internet. Uh, the internet usually will have uh, what has been recorded, say, a year ago or a year earlier. Unless, of course, there are some new material that has to be added, and in this case, this is being recorded in class, and then this patch is added uh, to the uh, internet files so that uh, they include all the material and up-to-date uh, material also. For those students who show up, 
uh, I've been inquiring why is it that they show up. It turns out that some of them are afraid that they'll miss something. Um, the fact is, of course, that in the cases when the, there are no frontal uh, lectures, um, students are doing well also, but some students feel that uh, sitting in class, being close to the lecturers, kind of give them uh, sort of reassurance that they uh, catch up with what's going on. So uh, I'm in large classes, I'm still lecturing uh, in class, but again, uh, the internet has all the material and um, uh, most of the students would prefer actually to um, study from home or from another place. So aside from uh, preparing lectures for courses um, to enable a long uh, distance learning, uh, the other uses that we've uh, made of this method. One is for continued education and another one is uh, for in-house seminars uh, for companies and in this case um, the recorded lectures uh, are left with uh, the companies so that the uh, engineers can later on uh, refresh their mind on the subject matter and go back uh, to the uh, material. And this proved to be uh, very, very effective, not to mention the possibility of people missing a lecture. And this is, by the way, goes also for the student. I didn't mention it before. Uh, in Israel, we do have a uh, uh, student who would serve uh, on the army during the semester and they'll miss classes and this has been a big issue here that uh, you have to uh, later on help them catch up and of obviously having uh, the lectures on the internet um, that can watch can be watched offline uh, is a big help uh, in this respect this is it and I'd like to thank you for your attention. Uh, here's a um, short biography of myself. And if you'd like to read it, then please push the stop button so you can uh, read it. Thank you very much.